Well, welcome to the Honky Tonk Cabin, where we play country music exclusively by UK artists. Well, I think me and the Honky Tonk crew have just about recovered from the uh, British Country Music Festival in Blackpool two weekends ago now. And we'll be playing over the next few weeks chats we had with some of the artists that appeared. But let's kick off today's show with Hit Town Breakout and get your boots on.
Now, as I said at the start of the programme, the British Country Music Festival was a fantastic event. And Tennessee Twin, a duo from Cambridge, did a brilliant acoustic set in the Arena Ballroom on Saturday. Well, we caught up with them and we'll play you that chat after their new release, Rewind. Jeff, Victoria, or should I say Victoria, and Jeff, Absolutely. welcome to Love Back on the Cabin. I was doing Age Before Beauty, that was what it was. <laughs> Stick with the second one. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the Hunky Tom Cabin. Thank you. Now, I've spoken to lots of people who really are welcoming back doing gigs and things like that, but you guys have been working hard and performing all the way through lockdown. Mm. With both with the Sofa Sessions yeah. and with the Song Collective. Now you've done over a hundred Sofa Sessions yep. and you're still going. Built a lot for our own back there, didn't we? <laughs> it, it started off, it was started off obviously pre-Covid. It was uh, summer 2019 and it was started off as a bit of a joke. It was, it was, you know, let's just do a song from our sofa every week and just stuck the phone up and it was terribly wooden, you know, all that kind of thing when we first started. Don't watch the first <laughs> No. Um, but you then just mean that I'm going to have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it, it, it gave us, we had about six or seven months of doing that and then when lockdown actually happened, 
um, obviously the live stream, thi live stream thing happened and, and picked up fairly quickly for most artists and uh, you know some decided they didn't like to do it, it didn't really work for them, some had terrible Wi-Fi or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and I think having done the sofa sessions it at least gives you some experience and it kind of starts to feel comfortable playing to basically just a camera and a screen you know without uh, the audience interactivity. Yeah. So that helped, didn't it? Oh, definitely. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and how did you meet Sarah and Donna Marie to do the collective? Uh, we already knew Donna. We'd met her through um, Simon at Art Radio. We'd met her at a couple of events yeah. and it all got on really well. Um, and she was talking about getting together to do a live stream and we thought we just needed to be rounded out with one more person. And Sarah and I had chatted online to do with various musical mm -hmm. things and we just we really got on well I thought I just got a funny feeling that she's the perfect fit for the last person to do this with us so we just approached it and yeah it just we all just clicked straight away and we now we chat off offline as well don't we, we, we yeah we often we have a cup of tea over zoom well wine <laughs> <laughs> usually on a Friday night but, about, about you know time but, but yeah it, it is yeah three ladies and me Oh, outnumbered. Honey. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> I bet you love that. Really. Yeah. It's not the worst. <laughs> it's, not, it's not the worst. But it, it is, even though you know we're all singer-songwriters. You know, there's three very different perspectives on on music. We live uh, pretty much opposite ends of the country. We play very different styles as well. We very different styles, different types of voices. So um, we did a version. We decided, you know, it would actually be quite nice to to uh, record and. and uh, writing things together, so we've done some writing. More information will come out about that in due course. Shortly, Shortly yeah. <laughs> uh, and we recorded a version of uh, Humble and Kind last summer, as we thought that was quite fitting for the time that everybody yeah. was having. And uh, did a video and all those things all remotely, and it was it was it was it was great fun just to work with them on the projects. It, yeah. it would be good to do Humble and Kind as the next song. by the front door Don't forget the keys under the mat Childhood stars shine Always stay humble and kind Go to church cause your mom says to Visit grandpa and chest you can Won't be a waste of time Always stay humble and kind Hold the door, say please, say thank you Don't steal, don't cheat and don't lie I know you've got mountains to climb Always stay humble and kind When the dreams you're dreaming come to you when the work you put in is realized Let yourself feel the pride Always stay humble and kind Don't expect a free ride from no one Don't hold a grudge or a chip and here's why The bitterness keeps you from flying You always stay humble and kind Know the difference between sleeping with someone And sleeping with someone you love the love you ain't no pick up line Always stay humble and kind Hold the door, say please, say thank you Don't steal, don't cheat, don't lie You know you got mountains to climb Always stay humble and kind When those dreams that you're dreaming come to you When the work you put in is realized Let yourself feel the pride But always stay humble and kind
when it's hot in a room, bear a popsicle. Shut up the AC and roll the windows down. Let that summer sunshine always stay humble and kind. Don't take for granted the love life gives you. When you get where you're going, turn right back around. Help the next one alive. Always stay humble and kind. Now, that was written by Laurie McKenna, and you're quite uh, fans of Laurie's writing. Laurie's one of those songwriters that seems to go just straight to the heart without, there's no arm, you know, that you can put it in place. It's just wonderful. There's a few people like that at Nashville in modern times, her and uh, Shane McAnally, Randy Clark. Yeah. They're just, there's just something. You know it's one of their songs, even if it's... Uh, it doesn't matter who's singing it, you can do no. it especially. Absolutely. Follow Your Arrow, which is a wonderful, wonderful song. Casey Musgraves obviously recorded it and made it famous, but you could tell it was a Shane McAnally song for a while off, I think. And the first time I heard it actually was him singing it, mm. which was even better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, on your latest song, Rewind, mm. you've got the wonderful Sarah Jewelry. How did you find working with Sarah? She's amazing. She's, nothing's too much trouble for Sarah. No, no. We were d delighted that she said she would she would do it. Um, we we got in touch with her through Sarah Yo because they're fairly local to each other mm. and had worked together before. Uh, it turns out also we have to mention our, our guitar player Tim, who plays with our live band, also used to play for Sarah Jury's back in band, which we didn't find out till later. So that was kind of a nice kind of uh, roundabout thing. Um, but yeah, Sarah was one of those people that you send a song to and she gets it. And you get, and you never have to ask twice for parts, they come back and it's usually a few parts and the difficulty the only difficulty is choosing which one because they're all fabulous. <laughs> and one thing I suppose, and I don't know if the audience will know this, I should offer you congratulations for actually being engaged. Yes, yes. thank you very much. <laughs> Something else this <laughs> year. <laughs> Yes, something else we've got to fit in next year between the gigs. Yeah, we do have to do a little wedding sometimes. <laughs> well, at least you know who you're going to get to play. There you go. Yeah, that's absolutely. Just, we've got quite a good chance. So that's saving on the cost. <laughs> yeah. well, I would hope. <laughs> no, congratulations on that. You. Now, you both come at country music from different angles because, Jeff, you've come from a sort of rock background. Victoria, you're a more classical background, I would yeah, say. Yeah, classically trained pianist and violinist. I'm not sure there's violin player or violinist. Um, fiddle player. Fiddle player. Yeah, yeah, I like that, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then sort of there I started, I was classically trained to start with my singing and then I've been off. And I've done a lot of musical theatre and cabaret. Not acting, just cabaret type of musical theatre. Um, so hence why I keep trying to put odd chords in my light songs. Yeah, thank you. Very empty, <laughs> <in> modes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I started off slightly differently. Um, I actually did all my musical grades on brass in a brass band. So that's how I grew up. And uh, when I was about, I don't know, 13, 14, took up guitar. Um, I, I figured at the time, I think the girls probably folk, be folk guitarists and brass players. I'm not sure that's true, but that was the thought. Uh, when you're that age, that's how you think. And um, yeah, I started playing in bands and I actually ended up playing in rock and roll bands, traditional 50s rock and roll bands uh, for most of my life. So. And of course, there's a massive connection between early rock and roll and the country scene. Um, just a really great article I was reading last week about how um, uh, country influenced the early Elvis tunes, for example. So there's so many patterns and, and chord structures and things like that. Because yeah. so, it's your hair. People keep saying it looks like a young Johnny Cash these days because your hair is it's got its cross between some rockabilly and, and a little boy at gig the other day saying, Dad, Dad, looks like Johnny Cash. I thought it was fabulous. I mean, his dad didn't I know like actually, and I think that was most of it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it was. <laughs> yeah. So, how did you guys actually meet? Because I don't know. <laughs> long, long time ago. But is it 20, 25, 26 years ago? About that, yeah. And uh, I had written, I'd written the song, the song for Europe, which was our entry for Eurovision. And uh, I got in touch with my drummer at the time and said, could you, could you get me a band together? I just need to go in the studio and get this song recorded and send it off. And, uh, and you were the guitarist who brought in, and then we wrote you yeah. to sing with me too. I, yeah, I just got a random phone call from, we, we, the drummer was a mutual friend and said, uh, I've got this 
a girl singer that wants to record a Eurovision song, would you come play guitar? So, but I you rolled your eyes, didn't you, Carol? Well, I didn't. I, then I was asked to bring a bass player friend of ours, which we duly did, and turned up on a wet Sunday afternoon, I think it was, at the studio. And, um, and yeah, and that's where we met. And we so sort of ever since then, I ended up singing with you on that track. And yeah, we found it the other day, didn't we? We, we did. That's our first recording. Too. Yeah, that won't be going any further in the house. <laughs> I was hearing that. <laughs> But yeah, it, and so we'd we'd, um, uh, we'd known each other as friends and, and played together in various things over the years, and it was about six or seven years ago, I suppose, we stayed for more concentrated on it. But with the country thing, what would you say have been the highlights of the gigs? Apart from today, what other highlights? Was Nashville one or winning, getting to number one? In terms of that, yeah, we were in shock for all of that. We didn't expect that to yeah. Some burst in at six o'clock in the morning. Have you seen the chart? Yeah, um, yeah I think playing in Nashville was, was amazing. Yeah. I think one that always stands out for us is uh, the number one time we used to be with Kezia Gill and Gary yeah. Nugent. We just sat in a circle with a little lamp and slip. And we were just sitting in the acoustic while just around with people. It was one of the most amazing atmospheres. It really was. It's the sort of thing that if you if you, you set out and designed it that way, it wouldn't happen. No, you know, it just, just has to. Organic. organic. And we, we were about to rerun that exact gig in our hometown of Cambridge um, the Thursday before the country was locked down on the Sunday. So in the beginning part of that week, we were sort of messaging each other saying, I'm not sure we should do this, and because everybody, you know, some gigs were, still, were being cancelled and others would carry on, and we, we agreed in the end that we should pull it. And as it happened, yeah, that we do. And a lot of your gigs have been down south, but you've got some coming up in north. Yeah, yes, indeed. we've started really since lockdown finished. We've been travelling a lot, a lot more. We've done a yeah. few up here, so we've been burning in the direction of the south as we've gone. Yeah, we've been down to Exeter and Yeah, and we've got two uh, two gigs in Manchester um, coming up uh, in October. Yeah. So we're playing the barbecue bus, which is always a great gig. We have played that one before um, a couple of years ago. Very good food there. Um, when, you, when are you doing the barbecue bus? Uh, the 29th of October. Yeah. And the 30th of October, we're staying up here for the weekend. And we're doing a Simpsons Stories collective live gig. Live gigs, yeah. Yeah, I've spoken about it a lot during the whole series of sort of streams and sort of it was always a bit like, yeah, we'll do that someday, but we figured now actually, now things are back on. When and where is that? It's 30th of October? It's at Gulliver's. At Gulliver's in Manchester. Manchester, yeah. Very well known venue, so yeah, it should be a good fun venue. Yeah. Good fun venue. Okay, okay. If, if I said to you, I want to play one more song of yours, which one would you choose? Oh, we'll There's one. two answers for this. Alright, <laughs> <laughs> you give yours then. Um, the, the, the songs I like about for different reasons, I suppose. Um, Alice is always a very strong one for me because we wrote it for my, uh, one of my niece who played guitar on it. It was one of the first ones we wrote for the Tips in the Jar EP, so that, that, that's a strong one for me. I would probably say When We Move. <laughs> which Victoria has a, a love-hate relationship with because um, we rate it, um, it, 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 it was one of those, so it, it, it's about that moment where we, if you've had a real argument with your partner and kind of gone to the opposite end of a house and going, you know, under your breath, and then you know someone has to kind of make the first move. That's what it's all about. And um, Victoria doesn't like singing it because she wrote it in a weird key. Right in the key. Yeah. yeah and I need to address that. <laughs> But when we, it was the first track that we uh, we had Sarah Jury play pedal steel on, and when we got her pedal steel pa- uh, track back and listened to it, all of a sudden the whole song just took on a completely different life. It was only really meant to be an album track, and uh, it just grew into something. And there's not much on it. There's, there's no, it's really voices, a guitar, and pedal steel. And that's it. And somehow it just grew. it takes on a magic of her own, I think, and that's probably one of my. I'd pick too hard, one yeah, it's just a nice happy tune, and we're singing together right from the beginning. Yeah, that's that's a fun story. That one was about, but it's inspired by the fact that you know we met a long time ago, but didn't get together as a couple until relatively recently. And uh, we've got some friends, Bob and Carol, who met uh, when they were in school, and they're now into their seventies and have been together ever since. And so the contrast of those two kind of uh, uh, ways of having a relationship was. Victoria, Jeff, Tennessee Twin, thank you. Standing at 
at the edge of the stone wall Try to take the first step, try not to trip and fall Hoping that you'll say yes and dance with me Gives me to a slow song, hoping like it's meant to be Cause if we can find the courage with this thing Maybe next we'll make a promise with a ring Give me wings to make me fly Make me bold enough to try In this crowded room make it just me and you Give me hope and make me smile Make our eyes and hearts collide Please make this the ground on which our love has grew Let's part with cause for a two-heart wrong day Walking by school like I often do Thinking of the old days, wondering what became of you Suddenly there's someone bumping into me There's a face of behind you, smiling right on back at me Where did you go all these years that flew on by? Is there one more chance to take for you and I? Give me wings to make me fly Make me bold enough to try In this crowded room make it just me and you Give me hope and make me smile Make our eyes and hearts collide Please make this the ground on which our lovers grew Let's part a cause for a two heart right Just me and you Give me hope and make me smile Make our eyes and hearts delight Please make this the ground on which our love was grew And let history show that our love was true Let's part and cause for a two-heart rendezvous Rendezvous
Now that was Bob Fitzgerald. Now every so often you find a singer that you haven't heard before and I've just discovered Kelsey Bovey. Now she's appearing in Nashville Meets London with Gary Quinn and Katie Cross on October the 12th at the Pizza Express Live in Holborn. I think she's worth going to see and this is her song Magnetic. Those pretty cool shoes I lose sight of my center I don't do what I meant to Every time I see you smile There's a part of me that's going wild I try to ask for directions But I never get clear instructions Just wanna know your game Now that I know your name You know that you're not usually my type Cause I always go for the wrong guy scary but i'd risk it again in a heartbeat every time that we're alone the whole world stops and times our own i've waited for this for so long stuck in a place you don't belong just want to know your game now that i know your name you know that you're not usually my type because i always go for the wrong guy so we talk into my Tough now, but it's not the end. Ca- 
Now, one of the other artists that we caught up with in Blackpool was Hayley McKay. She hails from the Northeast and appeared on the arena stage on Saturday afternoon. First up, though, let's hear a song thinking about last night. Thinking about 
see you later on tonight I'll be thinking about Standing in my door Holding fresh cut of roses Said you like my dress I was happy that you noticed The way it matched my eyes When the sun came up I was still dreaming The front door scene was all I was seeing It takes me back in time Thinking about last Delighted to welcome to the Honky Tonk Cabin, Hayley McKay. We don't get many artists from the North East. Now you're from Darlington. Yes. Is, is there a big North East country scene? Um, I think it's growing. Um, you know, you've got the Americana Summertime Festival at the Sage in Newcastle and that's growing from year to year. Um, I think there's a good folk scene in the North East and blues. But I think, yeah, country, I think it's growing more and more, but it still needs to, yeah. it's a little bit in Downton. I put on a country night recently with Kezia Gill and um, Biddy Rennell at the Forum Music Centre in Downton, and that's kind of the, the venue there. Um, yeah. Is that Darlington? Does Newcastle have more seen or not really? Uh, I think the only ones I can kind of think of is in sort of the Sage that I put on lots of country acts, but and I've yet to, with COVID and everything, it's been hard to see what's been going on, but hopefully it'll all flourish. And since the end of COVID, have you been getting out and getting more gigs, or is yes. it just the start? Yeah, it's. I had a lot lined up um, the, the other year, and uh, I had a little spot at Glastonbury on the acoustic stage and then here, but now we're here today, so that's all good. Um, and I'm playing at the Sage next year. So yeah, I had quite a few things lined up. But um, yeah, it, I used the time to just write lots of music and release. So I worked my way around the world, writing on Zoom with people in Nashville, Ireland, because Ireland, there's been a really good response in Ireland. Yeah, you have, you have got a lot of coverage in Ireland. Yeah. And you've been in the R RT charts and on RT programmes yeah, and yeah. things like that. Yeah, so I must you, go next year. Do you, is there a reason for that? Because I wouldn't have thought North East and Ireland fitted together. Scotland and Ireland maybe, but... I don't know, I think just some of the music has uh, resonated with some people and they've got behind it and, and been supportive. I have done gigs uh, there before and, and have been on RTE twice now and went in the studio the other year in Cork. And Hot Country TV play a lot of my music and I think they're based in Ireland. Yeah, yeah. Now the real nitty gritty question I wanted to ask you is, how many free coffees have you got having featured your, your <laughs> records in Cafe Nero around the world? I don't like coffee. <gasps> <laughs> but I love hot chocolate. And what brought you to country particularly? Mm. I mean, I've dabbled in all types of music throughout the years, but I love the storytelling and the emotion and the delivery of people like well, Dolly Parton, Alison Krauss. And about six years ago, I went to Nashville. After being spotted on YouTube, I was invited out there. And uh, when I was out there, I was just like, you know, massively inspired and started to delve into into the singers and wrote with some fantastic writers out there. I started out in musical theatre, so I think, I don't know, there's something about country and folk that is that sort, sort of storytelling element. I think it just goes with my voice. And, yes. um, and do your mum and dad uh, sing? Or, or oh sing? no, but um, my mum runs a music venue, she's very creative. And my dad is like my number one roadie in uh, we, we you know drove up today um on the back of his van he's got you know my website he's a just sliding sash windows on the side <laughs> 
really so supportive. They're, they're, they're both like, really supportive, which is great. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll get up and dance and sing, but they don't. No, they don't do it professionally or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and where to next? What have you got planned? I've got a little tour coming up at the end of this year. I'm at Gulliver's in Manchester, 10th of November. We've taken the full band, so I think there's five of us. Uh, the 12th of November, TT9 Club in London, and the 3rd of December in, at the Globe in uh, Newcastle. And then, um, yeah, just all, all my gigs are online on my website, just hayleymckay.co.uk. Um, Locally, I'm at the Sage in Newcastle next year, in April. But yeah, bits and bobs coming up. That's good. If we had to play you out with one song, other than Breathe, what would it be? Wild West. Seems 
everyone's going somewhere Nothing to lose But the truth is everybody They ain't got a clue Cause we're all free got to the end of the show and we hope you've enjoyed it and the interviews with Tennessee Twin and Hayley McKay. We've got more of those to come in next week's program with Wildwood Kin and Holloway Road. But to play us out are the Heartland Roots Band with Lucky Tonight.